بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دس ماڈیول آف کانویکس آپٹیمائزیشن کورس وی ول اسٹارٹ ود اے کانسیپٹ آف ڈیوالٹی ان پرٹیکولر وی ول کوکلی ریویو واٹ ڈو یو مین بائی ڈیوالٹی پرنسپل اور ڈیوالٹی تھیوری دین وی ول لک ایٹ دا فارمولیشن آف لگرانجین فنکشن اینڈ لیٹر یوزنگ لگرانجین فنکشن وی ول فارمولیٹ لگرانج ڈیول فنکشن Let's look at the concept of duality. Duality theory or duality principle refers to a way to find a bound to the solution of an optimization problem by looking at another optimization problem which we call a dual problem, the solution of which provides us a bound to the solution of original problem. So in fact this concept of duality or duality theory it formalizes the concept of lagrange multipliers and by this formalization we say that each optimization problem has two perspectives so original problem uh, which we uh, call which we also refer to as a primal problem and uh, a dual problem and that is related to the primal problem so this dual problem is always convex even when the primal problem is not convex or it is hard to solve so we say that the dual problem is always convex even when the primal problem is not so the solution to the dual problem serve as a lower bound to the solution of the primal problem so we have a primal problem for each primal problem we can formulate a dual problem and the good thing about dual problem is that the dual problem is always convex even when the primal problem is not convex that means we can solve a dual problem and uh, the solution to the dual problem serves as a lower bound to the solution of the primal problem since this is a lower bound so the difference between the solution of the primal problem and the solution of the dual problem is referred to as the duality gap and uh, we will we will Uh, look at some conditions under which the duality gap is zero or that condition is called a strong duality and we will also look at the concept of the weak duality and uh, so we say that the duality gap is zero when the primal problem is convex and satisfy a constraint qualification or some conditions on the constraints and we will study those conditions uh, um, in a while okay so let's start uh, with the concept of lagrangian or lagrange function so so we look at uh, the formulation of an optimization problem so we minimize f not of x subject to uh, inequality constraints and we have m number of such inequality constraints and we have a uh, p number of equality constraints so so this problem we refer to this problem as original problem or we call it a primal problem and uh, by definition this problem does not need to be convex so we say that the primal problem does not need to be convex uh, let us also denote the optimal value of this problem with uh with p star so we say that optimal value of this problem is is p star for this optimization problem so we are going to construct a lagrangian or a lagrange function right and uh, we have been doing this before so, but let let us formalize this concept of lagrangian for an optimization problem we can formulate a lagrangian function or simply lagrangian by augmenting objective function with a weighted sum of constraint functions 
so let us define Lagrange function so we say L x lambda mu is a Lagrangian function that is construct so we construct this by augmenting this objective function with a weighted sum of inequality constraint functions and a weighted sum of equality constraint functions so this lambda i is a weight corresponding to the ith inequality constraint function and this mu j is a weight that is associated with jth equality constraint function so we say lambda i is the variable with the ith equality constraint and we also write mu j the variable with the jth equality constraint right so these weights uh, so these we have m number of these weights so we can say this variable lambda uh, belongs to rm and since we had p number of equality constraints this mu variable belongs to uh, rp so these weights are these these two additional variables lambda and mu so we refer to these variables as lagrange multipliers or we call them dual variables or in some textbook they refer to as penalty variables or or prices and uh, since we are we are augmenting objective function uh, with with constraint functions and we know that if x is feasible then fi of x would be less than zero so so this will this will have an impact on the value of the objective function and that impact is being quanting is being quantified by these variables lambda i's and mu j's so and therefore we we call these variables as penalty variables or price variables let's look at the lagrangian function in more detail we say lagrangian l function of x lambda and mu is defined as objective function plus weighted sum of inequality constraint and weighted sum of equality constraints so the variable x is an optimization variable lambda and mu are the dual variables or Lagrange multipliers so let's look at the interpretation of Lagrangian so we say Lagrangian function appends or augments the objective function by incorporating the constraint functions as a weighted sum and the domain of Lagrangian function is given by the domain of the objective function and times rm since lambda belongs to rm times rp because mu belongs to rp we also note here that this lagrangian is an affine function of lambda and mu so this can be verified very easily from the definition of this lagrangian so if you see here for a fixed x so for lambda and mu so this is a weighted this is an affine this is a linear function of lambda this is a linear function of mu and this is just a constant so we say that for a fixed x this lagrangian is an affine function of lambda and mu and in fact we can show this as so if we define a vector fi in which uh, we group all the inequality constraint functions and we also define a vector h of x in which uh, we group all equality constraint functions so with this formulation uh, we can rewrite lagrangian as l x lambda mu is equal to f naught of x plus lambda transpose f of x plus mu transpose h of x and with using this formulation it can be readily seen that Lagrangian is an affine function of lambda and mu. Let us define another very useful function using this Lagrangian function. 
So we're going to define a Lagrange dual function that is defined as infimum of the Lagrangian function over the domain of optimization problem. So Lagrangian is a function of x, lambda and mu and we take infimum over x or we eliminate x and what we obtain is a Lagrange dual function which we denote by this g lambda mu. So g lambda mu is a Lagrange dual function is a function of dual variables or Lagrange multipliers lambda and mu and this is obtained by taking a pointwise infimum of Lagrangian function or if we use the definition of Lagrangian function we obtain that g lambda mu is infimum of x uh, f naught of x plus uh, weighted sum of inequality constraint functions and equality constraint functions here this d is the domain of the primal problem so we take infimum over the domain of the primal problem so uh, let's uh, review the interpretation of this Lagrange dual function so this Lagrange dual function is minus infinity if Lagrangian is unbounded below since this is a pointwise infimum of Lagrangian if Lagrangian is unbounded below then the dual function will take the value minus infinity what is more important or what is more interesting about this Lagrange dual function is that this Lagrange dual function is a concave function of lambda and mu this, this is super easy to show how so if you see this what we know about this Lagrange function that this Lagrange function is an affine function of lambda and mu for fixed x like what we just said uh, and since you're taking infimum a pointwise infimum of an affine function so so what you get is a concave function so likewise we had that a pointwise supremum of a fine function is a convex function so similarly a pointwise infimum of a fine functions is a concave function so g lambda mu is a concave function of lambda and mu since it is a pointwise infimum of a fine functions before we move on let me summarize here so what we have covered so far so we started with an optimization problem that may not uh, that does not need to be convex and we refer to that problem as a primal problem and for that primal problem we defined Lagrangian function which we obtain by augmenting objective function uh, with constraint functions and then we eliminated the optimization variable uh, from the Lagrangian by taking infimum over this set D and what we obtain is a Lagrange dual function G lambda mu and so and what we know about G lambda mu is that G lambda mu is a concave function so this G lambda mu does not have an optimization variable but the question here is what is the connection between this Lagrange dual function and the primal optimization problem and the connection is that the Lagrange dual function serves as a lower bound on the optimal value of the primal problem for lambda greater than or equal to zero or when lambda is in the non-negative orthant mathematically it simply means that g lambda mu is less than or equal to p star for lambda greater than or equal to zero where p star is the optimal value of the primal problem where does it come from how can you show that this g lambda mu is less than or equal to p star so let, let us let's derive this in fact this is very easy to show you can you can just do it in a couple of steps 
so we start with the definition of Lagrange dual function so g lambda mu is a pointwise infimum of the Lagrangian function and this is obviously less than or equal to Lagrangian for any x right since this is the pointwise infimum so we do not have x here um, and should be, should be less than or equal to Lagrangian for any x so in fact this is also less than or equal to if x is feasible so we say x we take it x tilde and we say x tilde is a feasible x so so far so we say that so Lagrange dual function is less than or equal to Lagrangian function uh, for a feasible x some lambda and some mu right and uh, so let me rewrite let me use the definition of Lagrangian function to rewrite this expression we say that Lagrangian is given by x tilde lambda mu so here x tilde is a feasible x right and uh, this is objective here we have uh, a weighted sum of inequality constraint functions a weighted sum of uh, equality constraint functions right so if x tilde is feasible what about fi of x tilde if x tilde if x tilde is feasible fi of x tilde would be less than or equal to zero and what about h j x tilde it would be zero so we can say that so this quantity would be less than or equal to zero when these weights these lambda i's are positive so fi for a feasible x is less than or equal to zero and this sum would be less than or equal to zero when these weights lambda i's are positive or in fact non-negative and uh, when x tilde is feasible so weighted sum of equality constraint functions is equal to zero right or we can say that Lagrangian x tilde lambda mu would be less than or equal to f naught of x so see this quantity is negative this quantity is zero so this informs us that Lagrangian for a feasible x positive lambda in any mu is less than or equal to the objective function for a feasible x and so what is the optimal value of the primal problem p star that is the minimum value of the objective function for a feasible x so if this lagrangian is less than or equal to f naught of feasible x this must be less than or equal to p star and we have already shown that this lagrange dual function is less than or equal to lagrangian for a feasible x and if we combine these two the consequence is that this Lagrange dual function is less than or equal to p star but this is less than or equal to p star when lambda is the non-negative orthant or for lambda greater than or equal to zero right. so we also uh, so this lambda mu uh, belongs to the domain of g with lambda greater than or equal to zero so we refer to such lambda mu pairs as dual feasible variables and it, it will be clear very shortly that why do we call these lambda mu's uh, such lambda mu for which lambda is greater than or equal to zero as dual feasible so we call them as dual feasible before i proceed i should emphasize here again that so this remarkable property of lagrange dual function that it serves as a lower bound on the optimal value of the primal problem so this is the foundation of the duality theory or the duality principle let's look at one very simple example in which we will 
first determine the Lagrangian function and then using Lagrangian function we will determine the Lagrange dual function right okay and so we take a linear program so we minimize C transpose X subject to uh, AX is equal to B so we have a fine equality constraints and we have just one inequality constraint that x is in the non-negative orthant right we have a very simple linear program so this this linear program is also referred to as a linear program in a standard form and uh, so we have already studied that we you can always convert inequality constraints into equality constraints by introducing slack variables right so any linear program can be formulated in in this standard form for this simple linear program so we determine lagrangian function first so lagrangian l is a function of optimization variable x lambda mu lambda and mu are dual variables and we define lagrangian as a objective function uh, augmented with inequality constraints so so we require inequality constraint less than or equal to zero here we have x greater than or equal to zero so we can write it as minus x less than or equal to zero so inequality constraint function here is minus of x so we write it as minus lambda transpose x right so lambda is the weight associated with inequality constraints plus mu transpose ax minus b uh, you can write either b minus ax or ax minus b uh, so it is your choice right so if we rearrange these terms what we get is uh, mu transpose b which is just a constant or a function of x and the rest would be c minus lambda plus a transpose mu whole transpose times x so this is and the term associated with x and this is just a constant so this is the lagrangian so using lagrangian function we can also determine lagrange dual function so by definition this g lambda mu is infimum of the lagrange dual function over x and that is given by so if we look at this lagrangian function uh, this lagrangian function would be unbounded below if this term that comes with x is non-zero so we say that otherwise when this term is zero uh, the lagrangian would be just a constant mu transpose b so, or we can say that if you minimize this lagrangian over x so what you get is uh, mu transpose b when c minus lambda plus a transpose mu is equal to zero and when this is not equal to zero so lagrangian would be unbounded below as a function of x and we get is minus infinity uh, otherwise so uh, for a simple linear program so we have determined lagrangian function and using lagrangian function uh, we have evaluated uh, Lagrange dual function and using our previous knowledge we can say that this g lambda mu would serve as a lower bound on p star which is a solution of this primal problem when lambda this lambda is greater than or equal to zero let us quickly review what we have covered so far so we started with primal optimization problem in which we minimize f naught of x subject to inequality constraints and equality constraints and we do not require this primal optimization problem to be convex for this optimization problem we can construct Lagrangian by augmenting objective function with weighted sum of inequality constraint functions and equality constraint functions. So we define Lagrangian as L, which is a function of x, lambda, and mu. 
and that is f naught of x plus weighted sum of inequality constraint functions and weighted sum of equality constraint functions. What we know about Lagrangian is that for fixed x, Lagrangian is affine in lambda and mu. So using Lagrangian, we also defined a Lagrange dual function. Lagrange dual function is infimum of Lagrangian over x. So by definition, Lagrange dual function g lambda mu is given by infimum of the Lagrangian function and you take infimum over x. So we eliminate x and eventually what we get is a Lagrange dual function as a function of lambda and mu, a function of dual variables. And what we know about Lagrange dual function is that Lagrange dual function is concave in lambda and mu since it is an since it is a pointwise infimum of affine functions therefore this g lambda mu is concave in lambda and mu and uh, we also studied that this lagrange dual function this serves as a lower bound on the optimal value of the primal problem so mathematically it simply means that so g lambda mu is less than or equal to p star and for lambda greater than or equal to zero so so the question is what is the best lower bound so this g lambda mu serves as a lower bound on p star but this is so for different values of lambda greater than or equal to zero for different values of mu so we will have different lower bounds and the question here is what is the best lower bound let's also quickly review this uh, graphically so we say we have p star optimal value of the primal optimization problem and let's also draw g lambda mu for some lambda greater than or equal to zero and we know that g lambda mu is concave and for lambda greater than or equal to zero it will be a lower bound on p star so it will be something like this so you see here that uh, for all values of lambda and mu so g lambda mu would serve as a lower bound on p star but we are rather interested in that what is the best lower bound and uh, we see here that if we maximize this lagrange dual function so we get this point which we call the best lower bound or when you maximize g lambda mu so you get the optimal points lambda star mu star so so the value of the lagrange dual function at these optimal points gives us the best lower bound uh, we will uh, review this in more detail in the next module in which we will formulate a dual problem that maximizes this lagrange dual function so we stop here and we will continue in the subsequent module. Thank you very much.